We can send our praise team up to your church to cover for you. You can come down here and we just do an exchange. Like, you know, I'm almost tempted to say, let's not preach. Let's just have the worship service. But I think I'd better. <laughs> no, today I want to leave uh, what we've been talking about, developing hearts for God. And I want to go talk about the one who came back to give thanks. And if you turn to Luke, if you open your scriptures this morning, let's go to Luke, the 17th chapter. I want to read a few verses and then I'll have a stand together to pray. The one who gave thanks, Luke 17, verse 11. Now, as it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourself to the priest. And so it was, as they went, as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorifying God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are they the nine? Were there not found any who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Let's pray. Fathers, we come to this time of thanksgiving. I pray that your spirit, who is the teacher and the enabler, will take your word, which is the truth, and work it into our hearts this week in regards to thankfulness and coming back to give thanks to Almighty God, who's made us well. So, Lord, open this passage to us and give us hearts to hear. Thank you for our praise team. Thank you for the children. Thank you for Bruce. That, Father, you'd bring all of this together, and then as we sit around and fellowship together around the table, that we will just be thankful for the fact that you've put us together in this thing called the family of God, and you loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at verse 11 here. Uh, we need to understand that Jesus was on the border between Galilee and Samaria. This was literally no man's land. The Jews wouldn't go through there. The Samaritans wouldn't go through there. So this is a good place for lepers to hang out. And in verse 12, we know that the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. The Samaritans were half-breeds. You might remember that when the Assyrians captured the northern kingdom, they took the Jews there captive, and they intermarried with them, and they came back Jews and Assyrian. They were half-breeds. And so here in this place, this no man's land, there was at least one Samaritan here. And a common misfortune for both of them, for all of these men, had broken down all the cultural barriers, all the racial barriers. They were gone. The only thing that was important was not that they were Jews or Gentiles or that they were Samaritans or whatever they happened to be by race. They were in men who were in need of healing, and they were men who were in need of God. And this was a place where they were going to meet both. So what drew them together was their common need, a common need of God, a common need to be healed. And that might be what would drive us to our Thanksgiving services today and also throughout the week, a need for God, a need of a change and healing in our own lives. But notice here that the lepers stood afar off. Now, I couldn't find anywhere in the Bible where it said how far they had to go, but some commentators have said they had to stand at least 50 yards away, which would be the, about the half a length of a football field. Now, nothing could better show their absolute utter isolation than this particular message in the Gospels and the life in which they had to live, 50 yards from any contact with the rest of civilization. Now look at verse 13. They lifted up their voices. Now, what they used to have to lift up their voices and say was, Leper! Unclean! No one come near! Leper! Unclean! But notice here, they have a new shout. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We are in need of mercy. We need to come to the Master. We need to come to the Savior. And verse 14 says, when Jesus saw them, he says, go show yourself to the priest. Now, we need to understand the significance of that statement. When a leper had been declared 
healed, he would go to the priest. Now, these men understood the rules. They understood what Jesus had said, go show yourself to the priest. And the reason you'd go show yourself to the priest was that he, he might be able to certify you as being well, that he might be able to have you provide an offering. Now, let me tell you the offer that a cleansed leper would have to bring. They'd bring two birds. And one bird would be taken by the priest and he'd cut his head off and he'd drain his blood into a bowl. Then he'd take that other bird, probably trembling at what its fate was going to be, and he would dip that, that bird into that blood. And then he would take the leper and he would take the bird and they would go out to the field and he would let that bird go. Even though it was covered with blood, it was free. And it's a beautiful picture of the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ on the cross who covers the multitude of our sin and sets us free. Now I want you to, to stop and think about that because Jesus had asked them to go before they were healed. Now can you imagine the conversation they had? What if we get to the priests and we're not healed? This is going to really look embarrassing. What are we going for? On the word of this one man? So verse 14. It says, as they went, they were cleansed. So as the, they were going to the priest, before they ever got to him, they were healed. All they had to have was a response to the words of Jesus. Go. Sold yourself to the priest. You know, faith is like that. Faith impels us to obey before we ever see the full evidence of God's working. Because see, once we're healed, once we get what we ask for, there's no need for faith. The faith is in the going, even though we have not received what we've asked from God yet. So in verse 15, it says here, So one, when he saw that he was healed returned, and with a loud voice gave glory to God. Now here was a man used to shouting leper and unclean. Now he's shouting praises to God. Now what's interesting is I believe he returned before he ever got to the priest to be certified that he was well. He turned back, comes back, and praises God. And others were probably in a hurry to go get the birds, to go offer their offering, to be the first in line, to be the first to get on with their life. But this man returned to give thanks for the one who had actually healed him. And this is my question for us today. Have we taken time? Have we taken time to come back? Have we taken time to thank Jesus for all that he's done in your life? And in verse 16, this grateful leper fell down. Now notice where he fell. He fell on his face where? At the feet of Jesus. Before he had to shout from a distance. Now he's at the very feet of Jesus. You know the others had, had encountered Jesus at a distance. They did not get to Jesus eye to eye, face to face, up close and personal. This man, because he returned to give thanks, was at a different place than everyone else. And he was the foreigner. He was the half-breed Samaritan. As I thought about that, you know, we're, we're all foreigners. Did you know that? We're all alienated. The scripture says that we've all missed the mark as far as God's concerned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Separated because of sin from God. Alienated from God. We're all foreigners to God. And we're all half-breeds. Did you know that? We are all made in the image of God to give glory to God. And yet, because of sin, we are broken and separated from God in need of cleansing, in need of salvation. So in verses 17 through 19 here, there's an extra bless blessing, I believe, of salvation and faith to this one who returned. Now, the grateful Samaritan received this because he actually came back in gratitude. And Jesus says here, your faith has made you well. Some have said, well, he's just saying the reason you got healed on your way to the priest is because you believed my word and you have faith. I think he went beyond that. I think he was talking more than just physical healing here to this man. I think he was talking about a spiritual healing that was going to take place because of his faith. And I don't think any other story in the Gospels probably show man's ingratitude as much as this particular scripture. Ten men 
came to Jesus, ten men looking for something, something that they could change their life with. Only one came back. Nine never came back. You know, often I think when we get what we want from God, we don't come back to say thank you. And so as we wrap up this study this morning, what I want to do is I want to look at three things real quick that I believe that we have the most ingratitude about that we need to come back and thank God for. And the first one is I think often we are ungrateful to our parents. There's a time in our lives when just a week's neglect on the part of our parents and we would have died. There were years when we were absolutely dependent upon them for everything in our life. And yet, the older I get in ministry, I've been there now about 47 years, I see that the day often comes when the aged parent becomes a nuisance. And many children are unwilling to pay the debt they owe to their parents. King Lear once said, How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. Second, often I think we're ungrateful to others. You know, a few of us uh, have probably not had uh, just our parents influence us. We've had teachers, we've had friends, we've had spouses, we've had maybe co-workers, maybe coaches, maybe pastors or someone on the church staff. Do we remember to thank them for the impact that they've given in our life? Again, there's a poem that says, Blow, blow thou winter wind, thou art not so unkind as man's ingratitude. And finally, how often are we ungrateful to God? After God meets a need in our life and time passes, do we forget to thank Him for what He's done? You know, today many of us don't even pause to give grace at a meal. We got a little plaque that we set in our, we have nine grandkids, so whenever they come to eat at our house, there's a little plaque that says, simply says, say grace. Say grace. Thank God for his provision. How do you think Jesus felt when ten were healed and only one came back to give thanks? How does he feel when we forget? What excuses do you think you could come up with for the lepers for not coming back? What excuses do we come up with for not coming back to thank God? So I'm going to end with with a couple of things today, and I want you to think about this, and we'll do this as our closing prayer. What was the last thing that Jesus did or that he provided for you that you want to thank him for? I want you to get that in your mind. The last thing Jesus did or provided for you that you want to thank him for. Let's pause right now. Let's remember to thank him for what he's done. Let's take time to come back and give thanks for what he's done in our lives. Let's bow together. What is the one thing right now that Jesus has done or provided for you that you want to thank him for? Maybe more than one. Father, thank you for meeting us at our place of provision and need. And we come to say thank you. But above all, Lord, we want to thank you that you've given your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to give me new life and to forgive my sin. If there's anyone here, Lord, that cannot pray a prayer of thankfulness for you coming and changing their life, because they've never asked you to come into their life, and right where they are, Lord, that they could say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that you are the Son of God who came and died on the cross for my sin. I ask you to come into my life 
that I might have a grateful heart to what you've done for me to give me a relationship with you. And as we come to this week, I would ask that you would continue to ask the Lord, Lord, what do I need to be grateful for and thankful for? What do I need to return to you and give thanks for? As we sit around those tables with loved ones, or maybe we're single, we're all alone, maybe we'll be joining somebody else. May you show us that which we are thankful for. We give you the praise. Lord, we're thankful for this service. We're thankful for the opportunity we've had to come and to sit at your feet and not worship you from a distance, but up close and personal. And we'd ask that you continue to meet us throughout the rest of this day and give us hearts of thankfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask our ushers to get ready to receive our tithes and offerings today. Also, we're going to have a closing song, and then after that, we'd encourage you to, to join us over into our uh, community center uh, for a dinner that's been prepared for us, that we might be able to fellowship together. How many of you are glad that you came here today, that you came and worshiped today? Uh, we're glad that you're here. We want you to know that Trinity loves you, that we care about you. Uh, if there's any need that you have, there's a little response card there in the bulletin. And as that, that offering plate goes by, if there's something that we can do to help meet a need in your life, we'd ask you just to fill that out and just drop that in today as well. Thank you.